Welcome to the series of videos on fundamental valuation of gold and silver miners, looking at their Q4 2021 results. This series will cover a couple dozen of miners, but only a fraction of these miners will be made public on YouTube, and that with a one or two week delay. For timely updates on all miners, join us at myfinanceteacher.org. Today we are going to look at Anglo Gold Ashanti, perhaps one of the top five largest gold miners in the world. Our fundamental valuation of gold and silver miners is based on uh, these valuation factors, including the price of gold, silver and copper based on the respective ratios. The model also includes the amount of reserves and resources that the miners have in the ground including the costs of extracting those reserves and resources in the form of all-in sustaining costs. We subtract the long-term debts as well as taxes and we look at per share value, taking into account time value of money and the amount of insider shares. So as you see, it's not an exhaustive list of factors that can affect the valuation of a miner, especially market price of the shares, which can fluctuate from day to day and from week to week. But these are the main factors that would affect the valuation in the longer term. I'm going to include three scenarios for the valuation, including the balanced scenario with a gold price of $1,900, conservative scenario with a gold price of only $1,600, and an optimistic scenario with a gold price of only $2,200, and the corresponding silver and copper prices based on the relative ratios. And as you see, even our optimistic scenario is not um, out there, it's not extremely optimistic. I have mentioned in some of my older videos that I do expect gold significantly beyond $2,000, much closer to $3,000 over the next couple of years. So even our optimistic valuation here is not overly optimistic. And in general, all three scenarios lean uh, more towards the conservative side. Looking at reserves and resources that Anglo Gold Ashanti has, they have 29.8 million ounces of reserves of gold and 93.4 ounces of resources of gold. However, they don't indicate which of these resources are measured and indicated and which of these resources are inferred resources. Whichever is the case, we only include the proven and probable reserves in the conservative and balanced scenarios. It's only the optimistic scenario which is perhaps slightly more optimistic as we include all of the resources measured, indicated, as well as inferred resources. Similarly for copper, Anglo Gold Ashanti has three and a quarter billion pounds of copper reserves and more than 6.1 billion pounds of copper resources. For costs, debts and taxes, Anglo Gold Ashanti has slightly higher costs as opposed to the top three miners, with a cost of $1,360 per ounce of gold. Long-term debt is over $1.4 billion. And again, I assume a flat 20% tax rate for simplicity for all of the miners in my models. Looking at per share value, we look at the number of shares outstanding, which is nearly 418 million shares. And unfortunately, the percentage of shares held by the insiders is 0%. Gold reserves are expected to last for 11 years at the expected annual production for any including reserves with only half of the resources extends this average mine life to 29 years. That would be relevant for discounting, where we use a discount rate of 5%. Let me know if you think this 5% is a bit too low. And before looking at the actual valuations, let's look at the highlights that don't go into the model, that don't go into the calculations, but might be taken into account to perhaps uh, bump up the conservative and the balanced valuations a little bit. Firstly, the cash balance is $1.15 billion, which is a good sign, as no miner wants to repeat the story of Gold Corp that went out of business a few years ago due to high debts and low liquidity and was eventually acquired by Newmont. Anglo Gold Ashanti has several greenfield projects 
as well as development projects. So there is a good potential to add more resources and reserves through additional exploration over the years. And as for the drivers of share price for this year and perhaps the next year, is increased production, mostly due to the ramp up in Obuasi mine, up to processing 4,000 tons per day by the second half of 2020, and up to processing 5,000 tons per day by the end of next year. This ramp up is going to improve the cash flow as well as the discounted value, reducing the mine life due to greater annual production and improving the discounted value. Lastly, arriving at our valuations, let's start with the conservative valuation, where we plug in the gold price of only $1,600 and we only look at the reserves of gold and copper without including any of the resources. In that case, the discounted per share value after the costs, debts, and taxes is equal to $9.74, which is quite a bit below the ongoing market price, but that indicates the level of risk with Anglo Gold Ashanti in case if gold just drops out of bed here by more than $300 per ounce. Is it very likely? To be honest, I don't think it's very likely. Instead, the balance price of $1,900 is perhaps much more likely over the next few years. And for the balanced valuation, we still only include the reserves of gold and copper in the ground without taking into account any of the resources. In that case, the balanced valuation is pretty, pretty close to the ongoing market price. The balanced valuation is at $25.49. And looking at the optimistic valuation, as I've mentioned, I do still expect gold prices far above $2,000, perhaps much closer to $3,000. But for this valuation, plugging in the gold price of only $2,200 and taking into account the reserves as well as only half of the resources of gold and copper in the ground gives us the discounted per share value after costs, debts and taxes of $73.62. That's quite a bit above the market price right now. And if you compare the optimistic valuation down to the balanced and the conservative valuation, we'll see much more difference across these scenarios compared to the difference we saw with miners such as Newmont and Barrick. The reason for that is relatively higher costs of production, which works as an increased leverage versus gold price. And that is all for this video. For more details, join us at myfinanceteacher.org. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.